All right, so here's our first example with the ratio test. Three series, one, two, three, I put three over here, short on space. Um, we want to see if we can use the ratio test to determine convergence of these series. Um, now, the ratio test tends to work really well for things like powers and factorials, right? Um, you know, exponentials. We mentioned that you know, the ratio test is sort of closely related to geometric series. So when you see exponential functions, you expect that the, the ratio test is probably going to be good. Um, for, uh, for factorials, the reason why the ratio test works really well for factorials is you might recall that the factorial can be defined sort of recursively, right? Uh, n plus 1 factorial can be written as n plus 1 times n factorial. Right? That observation frequently comes in handy because in this case we would say that um, our an, okay, an is 2 to the n over n factorial. And so we want to set up this ratio, an plus 1 over an. So that's going to look like 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Divide by an, we just multiply by the reciprocal, okay? n factorial over 2 to the n, right? And now we can see that there's, there's some cancellation that goes on, right? 2 to the n plus 1, of course, we can, might as well, why not, mention that one too, though I think everyone knows this. 2 to the n plus 1, we can always write as 2 times 2 to the n, right? Laws of exponents, n plus 1, so 2 to the n times 2 to the 1. There we go. And so we see that actually quite a bit cancels here. 2 to the n is going to cancel with all but one of those 2s. The n factorial cancels with, well, the factorial, if you like, right? This n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n plus n factorial. Cancel the factorials. And we see that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 over a n, well, it turns out once you simplify, that's just the limit of 2 over n plus 1. And that limit is 0. 0 is definitely less than 1. And so our conclusion here is that the series converges. Okay. So far, so good. Moving on to the next one. Now, for this next one, there, there are ways to answer this without maybe even applying a test, depending on how comfortable you are with the sort of long-term behavior of various different types of functions, right? Um, one of the things that you might have encountered if you've been playing around with these things is that factorials grow much faster than exponential functions, right? Because 2 to the n, every time you, you know, go, increase n by 1, you're multiplying by 2 up here, but down here you're multiplying by 1 larger, right? First you're multiplying by 2 over 2, then 2 over 3, then 2 over 4, then 2 over 5, right? So this, this is getting bigger on the bottom, right? Um, exponential functions, in turn, they grow much faster than power functions and power polynomials in general, right? Um, so we expect that actually here the numerator is growing faster than the denominator, and you could just apply this sort of basic test for divergence, right? You could say, well, look at a n here is 3 to the n over n cubed. And you could say, hey, look, the, um, the limit as... This, uh, the limit of a n as n goes to infinity, the limit of this thing, um, it's, it's actually infinite because it's infinity over infinity, but use L'Hopital's rule three times. You're just left with six on the bottom. You'll still have three to the n on top. It's going to go to infinity, right? Um, so, so this series here fails that most basic test for divergence, right? Um, which says that the only, you know, if the terms in your sequence that you're summing, right, if the ans, if they don't go to zero, you know that your series diverges. Um, so this is enough of an observation to point out that the series has to diverge, okay, because it goes to infinity. Of course, you could also, you know, we're supposed to be practicing the ratio test, right? So we could also see this from the ratio test. If we look at, well, what is an plus 1 
over a n. So this is my a n here. And so if I put n plus 1 in there, I get 3 to the n plus 1, n plus 1 cubed times, so 1 over a n will be n cubed over, over 3 to the n. Okay, so that's going to give me 3 times n cubed over n plus 1 cubed. And in the limit, that's going to go to 1. 1 times 3 goes to 3. 3 is bigger than 1. So ratio test says it diverges, right? Okay, so we can do that. What about this one here? Um, now, this is very similar to the P-series we, we talked about in the last video. We said ratio test is useless for this. And you can go ahead and you can check. The ratio test is useless. Um, if you try to apply the ratio test, you're going to get a rational function, and it's going to have the same power top and bottom. It's going to be n squared. The limit is going to be 1. Ratio test fails. But we don't need the ratio test for this. We know that this converges. This converges by comparison, right? It converges by comparison. With the p series, 1 over n squared because 1 over n squared plus 1 is slightly smaller than 1 over n squared, right? So the ratio test is not always the right tool for the job. Even here, even something like this where it really looks like, you know, it's the right sort of, you know, ratio test loves power function, or loves not power functions, but exponential functions. Um, it's the sort of form that works for a ratio test. And yes, you can use ratio test, but maybe you don't need to, right? As, as you move through tests of, of sort of higher and higher degrees of sophistication, sometimes you forget that you can come back to these very simple rules that we started out with. They can also do the job for you.